And welcome to the rinks at Shelton for the Empire Conference Division One Championship game between the number three seed Fairfield University Stags and the number one seed Farmingdale State College Rams. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching live on the LI Sports Network. My name is Jordan DeLuciano. I'll be on the call for today's Division One Empire Conference. Championship game, two bitter rivals with a very long standing history. How fitting they'll go to battle for the conference crown. Puck drop, we're underway. Majina Capre will go get it in her, his own end and leave it to Zach Lee right in front of us. Cohen can't slow it down, deflected. And there's LaChase right in front. Now Hawkins fires, and it's off a leg as Farmingdale is out and running. Farmingdale only one game they had the first round by being the one seed. Is that shot on goal? Hit off a leg. 
Farmingdale knocked off Fordham yesterday, six to four in the semifinals. As we have a whistle here, as the net might have been knocked off its moorings. So Farmingdale, winners yesterday in the semifinals over Fordham. And on the other end, the three seed Fairfield. Knocking off Delaware on Friday, six to two, and then yesterday, seven to three against Quinnipiac. As Farmingdale goes off sides. Fairfield, it is a quick turnaround for them. They had not just two games this weekend compared to Farmingdale's one. They had the late game yesterday and they had a late finish. So it's a quick turnaround, late game, early game. So something to keep an eye out for for the Stags. If they do indeed have a slow start, it's due to the fatigue of the weekend tournament. And for Farmingdale, if they notice that, that is something they would want to jump on early to get out ahead. Big hit on the boards there by O'Donnell on McKenna. O'Donnell second on Farmingdale's group in points during the season. Behind team leader Tim Duffy, he'll be 47 in black. Farmingdale in their alternate blacks trimmed in green. Fairfield in their solid reds trimmed in white. Pass out in front, all alone. Rotan is stopped and covered by Dillner. So it's been Farmingdale's start just over a minute and a half in. Dillner, this will be his 19th game of the year. He is 10 and seven with a 900 save percentage and a 3.27 goals against average. As Farmingdale goes to work again, Minio to the point, holds fires up in the air off a stick and out of play. Now, I've yet to call his name yet, but Dillner will be opposed by Farmingdale starting goaltender Jake Temkin. This will be his 17th game of the year. He's 9-5-1, and one, a 3.09 goals against average, a 9.22 save, and speaking of save, there's Dillner again. Dillner made 28 saves last night in the win against Quinnipiac and 31 on Friday against Delaware. It'll be Larico Rister ramped up and out of play. First five shots in the game, all to the black and green for Farmingdale. These two teams linked up three times during the regular season, all three going to Farmingdale. 5-4, 4-1, and 5-4. Judge wins that draw, Signor ready to the point, burns Rister to the net, and it bounced wide. Bridgewood in front, Wood missing his judge. Signoretti there, but it's cleared out. Stick goes flying as it's Maggi Capre with no stick. Puck rimmed around the boards and up and out of play right in front of us. The last time these two teams linked up, it was here in Connecticut. Farmingdale took a big lead into the third. Fairfield stormed back to take the lead only until Farmingdale with around 10 seconds left in the game, tied it and then won it, a Tim Duffy overtime game winning goal. As we're gonna drop that puck again. Not just in that game, Fairfield stormed back in the third, but the reason why Fairfield's in this Division I Conference Championship game here in the Empire today, day one against Delaware, it was a 2-2 third period, Fairfield scores four in a row to win it, 6-2. Yesterday, they are down 3-2 in the third period, five goals in a row for the Stags to win it, 7-3. As we're having a conversation right now with the officials, perhaps arguing a face-off infraction. Farmingdale able to make a change, McGregor off. Jesse Burns back on. But still fives aside, but now it's gonna be a, got a penalty on the board right now. There's a penalty on the board right now, but they gotta take that off, yeah. Yeah, so still five on five. 
as Doner will cover immediately and we will do it again. Fairfield this year, including playoffs, 12, 10, and, 12 and 10 on the year. They were 500, 10 and 10 during the regular season. A team that got off to a rough start. Lost their first six, but then won their next five. As Bridgewood lines up a man behind the net, able to keep that puck in a one-timing shot. Judge off the side of the cage. Rebound Bridgewood on the wraparound, and the net's off its mornings. But we, this time, I believe we do have a penalty coming up. Ref had his arm up. I believe actually it was just for net off its moorings. So still good here, five on five. As Fairfield just sends that one down, trying to get a breather in their own end. As icing is waved off, that puck ties down. It'll be the big man, Jason Brennan, in his own zone. Matthews goes up the ice, intercepted by Burns. He'll flip that back in, but it'll be Chase McKenna now to steer it around the boards. That gets away from Temkin, as Malawepsi will play, trying to get away from Brennan. It comes out right off the bench, and a shot save made by Tempkin as Brendan Cullen with a great look for Fairfield's first shot. The aforementioned Ned Malawepsi, the team leading point getter for Fairfield, 24 points in 22 games. Malawepsi comes into this one, including playoffs, points in three straight, where he's gotten three goals, Two goals, three assists. As now it'll be Duffy trying to get it in his skates and they go off sides. Duffy getting a look here with Immel and Bohm. Usually for Farmingdale you see Immel, Bohm and DeAndrea. As Matthews will go D to D to McKenna. McKenna up the boards, and again, second time that Fairfield's defense tried to exit into the neutral zone, and second time Farmingdale's defense broke it up. This time Farmingdale can't clear. Good step there by Cullen, but kept it in only momentarily, as it'll be Matthews up the middle, tipped in by Malawepsi. Hard on the chase now will be Brendan Burke. What a man on the boards, Cullen, trying to help out Burke on that boards, multi-man scrum, and out comes Fairfield with it. Down low, away from Marchi, and a puck kicks out in front, pops up around, as Farmingdale will flick that off the glass all the way down for no icing. So refs wave it off at the last second. Sloppy passing there by Fairfield in their own end. McCann on the chase, around the boards, but first on will be Rotan for Farmingdale. Rotan looks to the front, McCann, and gave it right back, and a McCann again could not slow that one down. Hawkins from the point, missing blocker. A chase. Can't find McCann. Kick down dangerously at the blue line, kept alive by Sippos. Quick two on one. McCann fires, muscled away, popped in the air. Popped it in front. McCann, backhand try, forehand try. Save made by Dillner. Farmingdale all over the offensive zone again. Sippos can't keep it. And this time it goes into the bench. And Fairfield will take that stoppage as the McCann LaChase Hawkins line was all over the offensive zone. And Eric Dillner has been tested early and so far so good for the goaltender out of Madison, Connecticut. Looking for Brazel cross ice as that one slowly goes to the stick of Temkin. So what I mentioned before is that Fairfield's coming into this one with two games in a row, having the night game last night and then an after one noon game today. You're starting to see that fatigue early on. Slow legs to start as Farmingdale has been all over them, but good goaltending by Dillner has kept this scoreless for now.
Weird bounce off a stanchion. Aiden Blake now behind. As now Farmingdale comes up the middle. It'll be Minio. Minio eight assists his last three games. Nobody home on the high pass. As it'll be Blake again meets a big hit on the boards, courtesy of Jesse Burns. And now Lorico. He'll walk in Rister one wide. As it'll be now Maggi to Capri up the boards, kept in by Burns. Chopped off off the glove and away from O'Donnell. As Brazel got that around, O'Donnell at the blue line and it'll be once again Maggi to Capri with time in his own zone, missing the stick of Ronan Curry and an icing against Fairfield. The defensive group right now for the Stags have not been able to connect with their forward group in the neutral zone. Twice has been picked up by the Farmingdale defenders and then just there the one time going for an icing. Bridgewood able to punch through despite losing the draw. As Zach Lee goes around the boards, Mountie DiCaprio, long pass, and again broken up. Bridgewood all over it, looking for the home run pass. Off the stick of Dillner, and he'll cover up. So the passing has not been well executed so far for Fairfield. They've been hemmed in their own zone for the opening six and a half minutes. Fairfield wins another draw, but they have to go to work at their goal line. And stepping in is Burns, big hit. Turnaround shot by Bridgewood, and he fanned on it. Second time this game so far, Burns has laid a big hit on the near side boards as that shot goes over the glove and into the netting. Farmingdale comes into this one, including playoffs, on an eight game win streak. They are 10 and two in their last 12. As on the year, they went 21, eight and one. Fairfield wins that, pops in the air, off the stick of Temkin, gloved down, kicked around, and a shot from the circle is swallowed by Temkin. So two of Fairfield's best looks of the period have both been by Brendan Cohen. Rams will win that draw in their own zone, but stepping in is McKenna, but that one pops out of the zone. It'll be Cohen to regroup and drop it off towards Matthews dangerously, and there's Signoretti. Signoretti pass, nobody home in the slot as Cohen will bank it and just get it out of the zone. Again, Fairfield struggling to break out of the zone here. Good body there by Malawepsi on Judge. And out comes Cullen. Cullen holds forehand, looks to the net, firing, shouldered away by Temkin. And now Duffy trying to counter with speed. Up the middle, misses Bohm. Bohm will go chase Kidd. And the puck missed both of them, helped out by Brendan Burke. And then sloppy play by Fairfield again in their own end. Kravitz digging for it. Puck still in offensive zone territory, but as I say, it comes out for Farmingdale. As McGregor gets stripped from behind, it'll be Burke and Bohm to battle on the boards. As now William Leary trying to deal with Immel. Immel again with Leary. Duffy trying to get involved. As Scharfstein links up with Connor Momro. Leary had the red line, so no icing here as Temkin has to wrap it around the near side. It'll be Kravitz. And now Immel. Immel trying to find a man in Hawkins off a skate, and Farmingdale has to try again with Kravitz. That's going to be an icing, most likely, and it will be against Farmingdale. So the slow start has indeed occurred. For Fairfield, it's a long weekend for the Stags with that night game yesterday. 
and the longer they can keep this 0-0 and not let up that first goal, the better. Because Farmingdale has been all over them so far. Fairfield just has to weather this storm. Shot off the draw, as that was Brazel. Never made it on net. Nice bounce here for the Rams. And it'll be Hawkins. Hawkins drops McCann. Puck rolled away from him. As they'll wrap it around, but only one there was a red jersey in Maggi Capre. Long flip there by Fairfield, nobody home. There's Brennan for Farmingdale. As LaChase will play it with a skate, slow it down in his own end. And he just shovels that one into the Farmingdale bench. It was a tough finish to the regular season for Fairfield. They wound up dropping back-to-back -back games to Division II opponents, one in Stonehill and another who we'll see later today in the Division II Conference title game, Sacred Heart. As right after this one, the Division I Empire Conference Finals between Farmingdale and Fairfield, we will have Division II Conference Championship between Stony Brook and Sacred Heart. And in the Empire lingo, it'll be the, right now, this is the Purple Division Championship, and then after will be the Black Division Championship. Brennan will chop that towards Jesse Burns. Burns will just chop it up the ice, but cannot exit. Good intercept. Fairfield backhand shot. Padded away by Temkin. Brennan runs over a man behind the net as they try to go in front to Mandato. Couldn't find him as that's underneath the stick of Larico. Magina Capre now. Trying to push it in. O'Donnell will wrap it off the boards as Fairfield has to regroup at center, but they cough it up immediately. It'll be the big man, Bridgewood. Powers his way down low and a quick shot. Blockered away by Dillner. That puck's in the feet of Signoretti, but now comes Malawepsi. Malawepsi trying to dance around one, ran into another black jersey as Farmingdale pushes the other way. Signoretti holds, fires, blocked down. Good block there by Matthews, but a penalty coming up against Fairfield. It will be Malo Epsi to the box and the first power play of this conference championship game will go to Farmingdale. Farmingdale right now out shooting Fairfield 11 to five. Farmingdale coming off a game against Fordham yesterday in which they had 50 shots and they scored on six of them. It will be Ned Malawepsi, two minutes for interference. Farmingdale wins it cleanly and they go to work. It'll be Luke Judge to Bridgewood on the boards and back to Judge. Got the big man Brennan in front as they go to Bridgewood, trying to work his way to the crease, padded away, but not cleared as Judge intercepts. Judge holds, cross ice, looking for a backdoor signal right. He couldn't find him. Bridgewood, Judge holds, fires, and another save by Dillner. Bridgewood to Judge. They play catch, they switch off to McGregor, center point, back to Bridgewood. Bridgewood, down low Judge. Judge, McGregor, Rister, save, puck loose, and sent down. Farmingdale looks to get a fresh five out there. We're now trying to get their first unit as they'll be Judge dancing around Sharfstein. Luke Judge in front, nobody home. Trying to pickpocket from behind his LaChase. Good back check by Judge as now it'll be Signoretti. Signoretti down low LaChase. Off the boards, it'll be Hawkins. Hawkins, Judge. Looks on goal, takes it, goes Hawkins. 39 left in the man advantage. Judge fires, deflected, and wide. O'Donnell. Judge 
Very methodical pace here. Signoretti, Hawkins, Judge, one timing shot goes wide. As we approach 20 left on the man advantage, Fairfield will come out two on two. Maggi DiCapre taking it by himself, firing, is stopped by Temkin. But now you got two red jerseys behind the play. 10 left on the man advantage as Farmingdale goes off sides. So the Rams got seven more seconds left of power play time as they'll have a faceoff come out of the zone. So a lot of offensive zone time for Farmingdale on the power play, but just tough getting those pucks through as one gets through there. Punched off by Dillner. As they try to find Malawepsi out of the box, and they do, Kravitz got back in time to deflect that out of play. As Kravitz realized just in time, Malawepsi was right out of the box with the chance on goal, but Kravitz, to his credit, closed up the gap relatively quickly. Buck will come around towards Duffy. Duffy up the middle, nobody home for Immel. It'll be William Leary off the boards. And now Matt Lepsey. McIntyre banks off the boards, misses a man. Might be an icing. Icing waved off. Kravitz will regroup it back to Murray. Murray had a goal yesterday in that 6-4 win over Fordham. In which Farmingdale went down 2-0 almost immediately and then rallied off six straight. As a pass in front, bouncing free Immel, he'll go to Rotan. Rotan looks, fires, deflected, rebound kicked away right in front of us. Good stick there by Murray, and he finds Immel. So Farmingdale was going for a change, so Fairfield has some time and space to exit. It'll be Connor Momro. Momro. Flying down the near side, spinning away, lost it. And it'll be Matthews in neutral zone ice right into the glove of Rotan. Icing waved off here. Minio will go chase McKenna. Minio behind Larico in front looking for O'Donnell. Couldn't get him. As now Puck goes up the middle, just missing. Sharfstein. Minio leaves. O'Donnell with Larico out of his reach. O'Donnell behind the cage, battling off two red jerseys. Everyone goes down, we play on. They find a one-timing shot by Sippos, but he fanned on it. As that one into the glove of Temkin, kept alive, but they blow it dead. 5-0-2 left in the opening period. It's still scoreless, Farmingdale is pressing after that power play going unsuccessful. Right off the drop, McDonald came free with it, shot from the blue line, goes wide. That was Zach Lee on the release. As now he has to deal with Hawkins. Hawkins with Lee in front of him. We'll wrap that around the boards. Maggi Nacapre to go chase it with McCann. Pokes it up, but right into the grasp of McGregor. Hawkins will cycle around, that rims around. Well, Chase will go chase it. And that puck stays in the zone. Good stick by McCann, but an extra effort there gets it out by Aiden Blake. Blake finds a man down low towards the net. And it goes behind the cage. Now in front, punched away by Temkin. And it'll be slowed down by Lee. <laughs> Fairfield wants a holding penalty. Could have got one, but not gonna get one. As it's McCann by himself, up ice, holds. And he'll try to peel off, pushed into the boards. Bridgewood works his way, firing. And that one wide around the boards. 
Burns rips one, and a bad bounce there. Could have been friendly fire off Maggi Capre. And Fairfield, again, just throwing it up the middle to no avail. That has been a point of concern so far for Fairfield. It's just firing the puck aimlessly up the middle. Shot deflected, kick saved by Dillner. And Dillner has been very strong to start this game. And if you're Burns there, you had a chance to catch Fairfield on a change. Instead, you just turned and dumped it in and wound up icing it. So that was an opportunity for Farmingdale to catch Fairfield sleeping. And instead, it's a defensive zone faceoff. Battle at the dot. Farmdale has to go chase it. And they'll come out. Long feed broken up by the stick of Leary, but he has to deal with Signoretti now. Signoretti bodies off Leary, as will be William Kidd now, getting away from Judge, the battle of the 13s. Kidd, again with Judge all over him. Farmingdale hounding on this breakout as Fairfield, that puck rolled out, but and not in the Stags' possession as they're gonna have to try again. Big hit on the boards as Kidd on the receiving end of Bridgewood, but now a foot race to that puck. We got Burns, big hit on the boards. It's gonna be a penalty as Burns took out Cummings. So now first time for Fairfield to go to the man advantage with 2.24 left in the opening period. So Cummings on the receiving end of that tough hit there by Burns. Burns gonna sit for two. As now Fairfield will go to work. They got Malawepsi at the dot, Burke to his left, Maggi Nakapre to his right, and on the back end, they got Cullen, and now with the puck, it'll be Lee. That one chopped in by Cullen, Maggi Nakapre to Malawepsi. Cullen, Rister, high, deflected, and they score! A deflected shot! from Cohen on the power play. Fairfield strikes first, it's one nothing. And it looked like an innocent enough shot that changed direction. It might have hit a ram in front of the net. So that looks like it will be Cullen's goal, and it will be. Cullen will get his 11th on the year, assisted by Malawepsi. Despite the dominance by Farmingdale to start the game, it is Fairfield taking advantage on the power play. As now Farmingdale looks for answers with Bohm. Bohm gets away from a stick check, gets away from another, but then the third time's the charm for Majina Capre. Immel to McGregor. McGregor walk, fire, blocked off a stick, and it'll be Cullen. And now Farmingdale turns back loose, Duffy shot off a leg, and he'll come out the center for McGregor. Burke, long flipped, kept in the zone, good glove by McGregor. Boom, holds, fires, hit a man in front. Immel trying to find it, poked away by Sharfstein. Robert Sharfstein now one against two as Fairfield goes for a change. As that defensive zone still a issue in terms of breaking out. Many turnovers at the blue line. 
As now Matthews looks back to her feed. Nobody home, but off the bounce will be Marchi. Marchi, Matthews holds, fires, steered away by Temkin. Matthews around the boards. it will be Marchi around again, having to step in is McKenna. Matthews, Momro holds, fires, and he just missed on the blocker. Fairfield pressing in the final 20. Farmingdale with now 14 left. Duffy will go after it. Under 10, it will be Duffy's puck. Takes a whack. Duffy on goal, bouncing free, poked away. Three seconds left in the period, and that will do it for the first. Fairfield on the power play. Brendan Cullen's shot. And that's all we got so far. It's a 1-0 lead for the Stags over Farmingdale in the Empire Conference Division I championship game. When we return, second period puck drop here in Shelton.
Welcome back, everybody, to the rinks at Shelton, Connecticut. Jordan DeLuciano here on the call on the LI Sports Network. Second period puck drop in the Division I Empire Conference Championship game back underway. It's a 1-0 lead for Fairfield over Farmingdale after a power play goal by Brandon Cullen. And it was a shot that hit off a ram and in, so friendly fire against their own goaltender as that one changed directions on Temkin. It was a period controlled by Farmingdale, but they left down one as this opening shift is controlled by Fairfield. McCann escapes the hip check there from Brendan Burke. As Malawepsi takes a whack but keeps on going. Malawepsi to Cullen. And he goes cross ice dump. Sippos dealing with Malawepsi. Burke, quick shot. Punched away by Temkin. And Burke paid for that one. Mariko. His pass was knocked away by Sharfstein. And Farmingdale will have to try again. Fairfield moving with a little bit more pep in their step this period. After that slow start in the first. That wear and tear from the last two nights, especially late last night, was showing its ugly head to start the first period. But Fairfield, credit to Eric Dillner, they weather the storm, but now it's Farmingdale going five hole to tie it up. Just I was saying about Fairfield weathering the storm, mainly due to Dillner's Fantastic first period. He stopped 19 of 19, but the first stop shot in the second beats him five hole. It will be Sean O'Donnell getting his 16th goal of the year and make it goals in back-to-back -back playoff games for O'Donnell. As that puck, as Sharfstein trying to control it. Big body there from Brennan. And Sharfstein is now slow to get up. Sharfstein to the bench. Farmingdale, offensive zone. O'Donnell, Larico trying to go around the net. He'll come out with it. Cross ice, Sippos fires way wide. Tough to get a read this game. It's Farmingdale with the better of play in the first, and they're down one nothing. Fairfield with the better of the play in the opening minute or so in the second, and it's Farmingdale on the board. As both these teams yesterday plunged their way to victories off rapid fire onslaught of goals we talked about in the first period. Farmingdale was down two nothing within the first couple shots of the game, and then scored six straight throughout the course of the three periods to win 6-4. Fordham have put in two late goals in the third to make it a little bit more interesting. And then Fairfield, 2-2 game on Friday in the third against Delaware, they win 6-2. As they turn it over here, Farmingdale, Fairfield poked away by Temkin, rebound alive, as it was a slow moving break for Brazel, poked away, but the Stags still with it, and they score! William Leary, from the blue line, the lead is back to Fairfield, two to one. And it was Leary through a sea of screens as immediately, almost, they erase that tie game. So we go almost the entire first period without a goal. And then the kick off the second period, just over three minutes in, we get back to back. One for the Rams, one for the Stags. As weird bounce there, Temkin had to be sharp. And it'll be Cohen behind the net, battling off with Immel. Cohen now to the blue line, shot for the point, kicked away by Temkin, out of play. As I was saying before, we've seen these two teams this tournament 
showcase their ability to score in succession out of nowhere. It's the reason why Fairfield's in this championship game. Four straight against Delaware, five straight against Quinnipiac. And both those instances happened in the third period. As Fairfield wins the draw, turnaround shot, way high, way wide. As Murray will backhand that one up, away from Bohm. And Lee will send it back in. Murray meets a hit from Malawepsi. It'll be Lee towards the net and held by Temkin. Fairfield, it's a night and day period already compared to the first. A lot quicker, faster pace, more urgency. As they've kind of flipped the script here. And Tepkin will have to cover that up and they'll do it again. Stags looking for their first win this year. 0-3 against the Rams. But if you want to go back right before those three regular, regular season games this year, their last battle was in the quarterfinals winner go home of Nationals last year where Fairfield eliminated Farmingdale as that one scooped away by Dillner. Fairfield wound up coming in second place in Nationals, the runner up to the champions Binghamton where they lost to Binghamton in the championship game. And also, not just runner up in the national tournament last year, Fairfield, runner up in the Empire Conference playoffs. They lost in overtime to Ramapo in the conference finals. So back to back years for the Stags, they are in the conference championship game trying to right the wrongs of last year's overtime defeat to Ramapo. One shot and wide. Right off the draw, a quick release by LaChase. Long pass off a skate of Rotan. Might be a two on one. They got a man open down the middle. Could not find him as it was Mandato alone. But stepping in from the blue line is Lee. And in front, covered down by Temkin. They had Mandato wide open coming down the middle. If they could have found him, it would have been a brief two on, two, uh, two on O, should I say one on O on Temkin. Momro wins it, Sharfstein, one-timing Matthews, did not get all of that one, as it'll be Brennan now to loft it cross ice towards Lorico. Offsides here against Fairfield. Uh, Sharfstein got the message a little late. Sharfstein and Robert Sharfstein out of Chicago, Illinois, Aiden Brazel out of Hingham, Massachusetts, two of the newer faces on this Fairfield group this year, two forwards replacing two graduating forwards in their team captain and leading point producer from last year, Vincent Spaziante, along with fellow forward Michael Pitticelli. So two out and two in for the Stags. Off the boards, a carom fanned on by McKenna. McKenna again finds a man in Sharfstein, turnaround shot wide of the cage. Marchi, Sharfstein, backhand pass in front, pinballed around, covered by Temkin. And last year it was Eric Dillner and Nett kind of swapping turns with Andrew Webb. But that's another departure on this Fairfield group. So now it has been really Dillner's net all year. Marchi will throw it near side boards. McGregor for Farmingdale. Wax that one away. Sharfstein on the receiving end of a big hit there by Lorico. And Farmingdale wants an interference call, not gonna get one. It'll be Connor Momro with speed and space. Momro fighting through, still with it, but that's the play out of the zone as Tempkin will kick that into the netting. 
after Farmingdale had a convincing shot total advantage, it is now almost identical. It's 22-21 in favor of the Rams. Judge wins that one. Bad pass by Burns, and it got intercepted by Brazel. Burns tried to go D to D, went right to the skate of Brazel. It'll be Rotan, Signoretti, gives it right to the defense. So this is what Fairfield was doing last period. Maybe it's just this side of the ice. No icing here, as William Kidd will have it in his own end with Signoretti on him. Trying to dance around Signoretti, and he will. Kidd will waffle down one up the middle. It'll be Brazel. Brazel holds, fires, blocked down. Trying to get his own rebound behind the net. Pokes free, Signoretti will have it. Aiden McDonald intercepted the breakout. Farmingdale will have to try again. Murray to Rotan. Rotan just gives it right to a stag. So, like I said, it's looking like what Fairfield was doing last period. Now it's Farmingdale's turn. Breaking out of the zone has been an issue. When they get out now, Signoretti, cross ice. Bridgewood winds, fires, blocked down, and Maggi DeCapri felt that one. Around the boards, Brennan. Looks, fires, popped up in the air, another block. Brennan, Bridgewood, from behind, goes to the blue line. Murray, fires one, wide of the cage. Brennan, to Bohm. Bohm walks out, turnaround shot, punched up by Dillner. And that one's sent down. That should be an icing, and it will be. 11.48 left in the second period. It is now a 2-1 lead for Fairfield. Thanks to the goal that broke the 1 1 tie by William Leary. Leary, that is, this is his 22nd game of the year, his second goal. So, had only one goal throughout the regular season. As Kravitz's shot got blocked down, he'll wrap it around the boards. Long pass. Off a stick, no icing. And a hit there on Kravitz. And we play on as Cohen got the better of Kravitz and does again. Malawepsi now as Kravitz comes up high on Cohen. And Cohen could have got called before. Kravitz could have got called there. They let both of them go. And then Kravitz takes down Cohen. And now he's going to get called for it. So both players got away with something. The ref let both go, and then the second time it was Kravitz to sit now for two. So it looked like Cohen interfered with Kravitz coming around the net, no call. Then Kravitz came high on Cohen, no call. And then coming up the ice, Kravitz took down Cohen, and the third time was enough. So Fairfield back to the man advantage. They're one for one already today. It was that Cullen goal, the man who just drew the penalty. It'll be McKenna. Marchi, way cross to Kidd. Kidd looks, fires, pet save, rebound, and another by Temkin. But they can't clear. Momro, high pass knocked down by McKenna. Marchi. Brennan. Could not get up the boards again. Still with it on the snags. Kid. McKenna off his stick and still in the zone. And this time the big man Brennan was able to wrap that over some sticks and out of the zone. Kid tried to go end to end there, lost it, but Still in the possession of Fairfield. It'll be McKenna now. Nice move around Immel. 
McKenna finds a man, Mallow Epsi fires, and what a snag with the glove by Temkin. Temkin, big stop there on Fairfield's leading point producer. Mel Epsi coming to this one. We mentioned the first period. Points in three straight. Now it's points in four straight as he got an assist on that power play goal before. Leary, or excuse me, Lee now. Lee holds, fires, and he misses wide. Cohen will wrap around the net. 38 left on the main advantage. Majina Cap right now walks in, cross ice feed, and playing it on the bank is Burke. Burke walks, fires, blocked down. He'll get it back and leave to Cohen, to Lee. Lee drags, looks for room, still with it, still with it, goes down low. Maloepsi falls down, Rotan can't clear. Fairfield still with it, under 15 on the man advantage. Maloepsi, one timing shot by Burke, he lost his balance. So that will do it for the Fairfield power play. Five seconds and four. They got Burke wide open here, but they just waited too long to give it to him. That was off screen, but Burke was wide open at Farmingdale's blue line. Back to five on five we go. Fairfield still with this 2-1 lead. Nine minutes left in the second. Good hit there by Cummings on Brennan. Mandato. Tried to go in the corner, got broken up. And now a foot race, icing waved off. Signoretti with Lee. That'll be Judge around the boards. Brennan, long swipe, kept that in. Brennan tried to go to the point, hit off a stick, and now a foot race the puck. McGregor. Judge could not get that one cleanly off the boards. McGregor will wrap it around towards Bridgewood. Bridgewood. Coughs up to Ronan Curry, helped out by the big man Brennan, spinning away from Mandato. And just, see, just aimlessly throwing that up the middle was Brennan. So Farmingdale has to try again now with McGregor to Brennan. Brennan banks off the boards. Had Bridge went up the middle, but elected to go same side. And now, could be a quick two-on-one with one man back. Going in front, off a stick of the sliding McGregor. Point shot goes wide. Signoretti pokes it free in a foot race now with Marchi. But good support there by Jeffrey Matthews to help out Marchi. Prevented any odd man rush. Off the bench, you got McCann going in on chase. McKenna up the middle, finds Marchi. Now Momro. That one off the leg of McCann and out of play. It has been Fairfield's period. They're doing it with Farmingdale, what Farmingdale did to them in that first period. And so far they have been rewarded up 2-1. It'll be Rotan for Farmingdale. He'll go get his own dump in. And he looks for Sippos and finds him. Fires one to the net, pants save, and now a stickless Dillner. And the stags can't clear. Let's see if Farmingdale can take advantage of this. Goaltender with no stick. They're trying to get it to him. And they will. Good teamwork there between Leary and Dillner. And an icing against Fairfield. Farmingdale has their big win streak on the line. Winners of eight straight. A torrid pace to finish the season. And against the team, they've been very successful against this year, 3-0. As a shot knocked away. As Farmingdale, they're trying to avenge the 3-0 regular season. Not enough for them. As a big hit delivered on the boards by McCann, the captain, as they go off sides. With the 3-0 regular season might not be enough for Farmingdale. They're trying to avenge that national tournament loss to Fairfield last year. 
And then for Fairfield, we mentioned before, they're trying to avenge last year's conference finals loss to Ramapo in overtime. McCann now to Hawkins. Hawkins, McCann. As that one's wrapped around the boards, trying to get it and will not is Kravitz. No icing here. Kravitz to Murray. It's in Murray's feet, all tangled up. And now it's Fairfield's puck firing off the post. Aiden McDonald was right there on the loose change as Murray could not find that puck. Long pass off the stick of McDonald, the man that just hit the post. And this next one's a big one. This is, of the three matchups, these two teams, it's been mainly high scoring, 5-4, five, 5-4, four, five, four, then 4-1. Four, so we got a nail biter 2-1 game right now. The next one is huge. Can Fairfield go up two or can Farmingdale tie this up? But for the Stags right now, they'll be just happy with a 2-1 game. Score holds. Fairfield's your champion. Larico, turnaround pass, backhand try, trickled in front, and a penalty, I believe, is coming up against the Stags. And it is. Maji to Capra to the box. So let's see what they got Majin Capre for. The defenseman out of Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Wearing that assistant captain on his top left jersey. And he'll be hooking on Majin Capre. So Farmingdale, second time today, they will go to the man advantage, 0 for 1 so far. Bridgewood wins it, it'll be Signoretti. Judge has to play in his feet, pickpocketed by Malawepsi. And they'll come shorthanded, trying to flip a man down the middle on a break, broken up as Malawepsi goes to Matthews, and Matthews will send it in. Luke Judge with speed, takes it himself. Judge will go all the way around. Try to go to the blue line, got poked away, and Judge will get it again. Luke Judge still with it. The man that entered the zone goes to the blue line. Signoretti back towards Judge. Over his stick, Brennan to retrieve. Bridgewood. McGregor. Signoretti to Judge. Judge fires. Fought off. Rebound. Stuffed away. And they score. Chaos in front. Formingdale hammers it home and ties it up at two. And that's why you put the big man in front. Shot by Judge, and you got Brennan's size and power helping getting that cross the line. It's either gonna be Judge or Brennan, I believe. And they get to give it to Brennan. So the big man in front hammers it home to tie this up. One power play goal each, and that's helped tie this game at two. Brennan will get his seventh goal on the year as he leads Farmingdale's defensive core in points, goals, and assists. as the assist will go to Luciano Signoretti. Signoretti played with the Division Three Farmingdale team last year, got off to a great start, pretty much scoring in every game, but then hit that sophomore slump, hit a skid, and has found a spot in the lineup again. Last time Farmingdale tied this game, it was a rapid response by Fairfield, let's see if they can do it again. Momro, 
Escapes a hit. Momro looks in front, nobody home. He'll still hold it. Leaves to the blue line. Kid shot broken up. As McCann disp disposed there by Momro. Puck free. McCann swipes at it. And it's out of the zone. That one just missed staying in. William Kidd was right there. And that puck just inches came out of the zone. It'll be Maloepsi and Immel at the dot. And it's hit to the winger, Brennan Burke, throws it towards Temkin, pushed away. Maloepsi up the boards, way too high and hard for Kidd. Kidd has to go get it. Good bounce there for the Stags. Maloepsi, tough angled shot, headed away by Temkin, but first on it is Cohen. Burke, Kidd, walks, fires, popped in the air off a body. Cohen, good reverse hit there on Sippos, and now it's Burke to Cohen. Cohen holds, long feed, one-timing kid, knocked down by Immel. Immel finds Bohm with Duffy to the net. Bohm, Duffy, and a save made by Dillner on Farmingdale's leading goal scorer, Tim Duffy. That might be one to remember, but Sippos intercepts, low wrister popped in the air, and out of play. Eric Dillner, a big stop in tight on one of the top players within Division I, Tim Duffy. Tim Duffy getting first team all Empire nods on the forward group. Alongside Quinnipiac, Sean McTavish, Fordham's Anthony DiMario, and then on the back end, Jason Brennan, the one who just tied the game, getting first team all Empire. McGregor, D to D, Kravitz towards the net, knocked down and under the glove of Dillner. Long wrister, first on it will be Evan Moore for Fairfield. Or excuse me, that's Mendado. As now be Minio. Minio finds a man in O'Donnell all alone, and he scores! Sean O'Donnell, his second of the game, gives Farmingdale the lead, it's 3-2. Minio with eight assists in his last eight games, make it nine assists in his last nine as they find the Division I Player of the Month of January for his second of the game. Just how Fairfield got a late first period goal to go up one. Farmingdale does the same, but some danger in front there, but they get away with it. As Farmingdale goes back to work here, Signoretti tries to turn and find her fans on it. Judge now to the net, and all alone Bridgewood popped in the air, rebound alive, and behind it goes. Bridgewood, Signoretti with under a minute, trying to throw it in front off a body. As Brazel can't clear, Farmingdale pressing in the final minute. Bridgewood now. Gonna get away from his own teammate. You got McKenna down there for Fairfield. Gotta watch that arm there for a holding as Bridgewood will find it. Bridgewood backhand pass, broken up and sent down. That's a high stick on Brennan. Big hit on the boards and that one is touchdown. So 24.7 left in the second. We get a stoppage with Farmingdale up 3-2. They announced the assist to Kravitz and Brennan, but I, I, that was Minio that fed O'Donnell down the middle. 
as right now they're trying to figure out where this face-off should be. And it's going to be right outside of the Fairfield zone, and rightfully so. That's where the puck was touched up. Still having just, I think the conversation now is just going up to each bench and letting them know why this faceoff is here, but we move on. Malawepsi and McCann, the battle of the captains at the dot. As Kravitz has to go get it on an icing. Another uh, debatable icing there. Looks like Kravitz was going to have to play that in his own end. So 16 seconds left. And Farmingdale will have an offensive zone faceoff. Wins it cleanly. Hawkins can't go across point, but keeps it in deep. Under 10. McCann now coming out from behind. Couldn't find Kravitz. If they move, they can get something here. Four seconds left. Pass up the middle. Broken up by Hawkins. And that will do it for the second. Good back check by Matt Hawkins, breaking up that last second rush by the Stags. One more period left to go in the Division I Purple Division Empire Conference Championship game. It's Farmingdale up 3-2 on Fairfield.
Welcome back everyone to the rinks at Shelton. You're watching on the LI Sports Network. My name is Jordan DeLuciano. One more period left to go. Formingdale up 3-2 over Fairfield in the Division I Empire Conference Championship game. It was a 1-0 lead that Fairfield took into the second period and it was tied up at one, immediately answered then by William Leary with a point shot that got through some screens and a 2-1 lead did not last as Farmingdale went a power play goal by Jason Brennan to tie it and then right at the end of the period, Sean O'Donnell off the feed from Joseph Minio to give the Rams a 3-2 lead and that's where we stand as of now. Fairfield, the reason why they are in this championship game today has been two wins in a row in the playoffs, Friday against Delaware, last night against Quinnipiac, in which they unleashed in the third period consecutive goals to take the lead and win in convincing fashion. Can they do it again to win the conference crown? As Farmingdale will come out with Hawkins, as he got swarmed, and now Malawepsi will come free with it. Malawepsi backhand shot, did not get all that one, trying to wrap it around, and it got broken up. Off the boards, kept in, holding, dragging, is Lee. Lee still with it, knocked away by Minio on goal, and knocked down in front, and we poked out the center. Rolling to the net, stick down, and it'll be O'Donnell on it. Knocked down, Sippos chops at it, and wide of the cage. Minio in front, net off its moorings. So Farmingdale pressing a bit there, as they get a whistle for the net coming off. O'Donnell's line will go back to work. They have two of the three Farmingdale goals, and they are coming from O'Donnell. Off the draw, friendly fire there. Dillner snags it. And we'll do it again. As Fairfield quickly changes up the defensive group, it's Matthews and now McKenna to hop on. You got Marchi at the dot. O'Donnell pushes forward. O'Donnell. Off the back of the net, it'll be Minio's puck now with Marchi on him. Marchi wins the battle of the stick lifts. Lorico shot wide of the cage. Puck in the air will be Lorico. Lorico dancing around a couple. We'll back that off the boards. That'll be McKenna. High off the glass, Momro has that bounce over a stick. It'll be Sharfstein to poke it free, but right to the grasp of Rotan. Rotan just missed the red, and it will be an icing against the Rams. Farmingdale yesterday in the third period coughed up two late goals to Fordham, made things a little bit more interesting. And right now, at yesterday they were up 6-2, so they got uh, afforded giving up those two goals. Today, much different story. As it's one to Kid, Kid shot, blocked down, all the way down as Farmingdale will go for a full sail change. That one hit the stick of burn, so no icing coming, as Jason Brennan will go get it. And that one might be an icing against Farmingdale, and it will be. Anytime these two teams link up, regardless of the record, regardless of the previous matchups, it will always be a dogfight. These two teams have a long history. And another icing, it looks like. If that hits the net, nope, it does not. So we will drop it in Farmingdale Ice back to back times.
Same drop to the right of Temkin. And it's Fairfield to come away with it. As McDonald will throw that around the boards. Brennan down low for Farmingdale. Up the middle could be a foot race here. Icing potentially again. And make it three in a row. As it looked like Bridgewood had a step, but Leary was able to close the gap. And for the third time in a row now, we will drop it to the right of Temkin. McDonald, tough angled shot, knocked down behind the net. Temkin thought he had it, it got free. Out from behind, turnaround shot, and Temkin has gotten that one. So now Farmingdale can finally change, get that defense off of Burns and Brennan. Now they got Murray out there, I believe maybe Sippos. Can't make out who the other black jersey is. As stepping in his imagine to Capre, and that one stays in the zone. Nice play there by Ronan Curry. Murray in a foot race with Curry now. Murray and Curry as they push off. Now you got Mandato and Judge, and it comes loose for Kravitz. Kravitz, long flip up the middle, a leaping glove by Maggi Capre keeps it alive. And it'll come all the way back around. And now Murray. Murray, Bridgewood, and right on net over the bar, and it'll be Signoretti to scoop it and flip it down low. Bridgewood again. Towards Immel, Immel pinned up there by Cummings, and out comes Maggi Capre as Cullen has to play it from behind. Cullen holds, fans on it, poked away, and now Immel will pick up and throw it, almost had a breakaway for Duffy. Good recovery there by Christopher Cummings, preventing a breakaway. Immel spins off one. Goes to Signoretti. Signoretti will pop that off the chest of Dillner. Immel reads that one but could not slow it down. It'll be Zach Lee off the glass, out of the zone. Kravitz to eat it and then throw it in. And then Lee again. Kravitz trying to get that away from Burke. Burke was right off the bench. Almost pickpocketed him. Temkin leaves it. Yeah, Cohen coming off the boards. Cohen backhanded across, finds a man in McKenna. McKenna couldn't do much but get it deeper as Burke backhand try, punched away by Temkin. Matthew stepping in. It's been Fairfield's best line here. Maloepsi, Burke, and Cohen. It's the power play line that started the scoring. It was a 1 0 lead in the first period as Cohen's shot got through. Kravitz on a long shift, finds Duffy. Duffy gets around one. Duffy will flip it in. He'll go get it himself. And a penalty coming up on Duffy for smacking the stick out of McKenna's hands. So it's gonna be a slashing call against Duffy. So McKenna had one in on the stick, and when you have one in on the stick, it's enough to knock it loose. And for the third time, Fairfield will go to the man advantage, trying to duplicate the success they had on their first one. When the man just off screen now, Cohen got them on the board, and there's Temkin making a stop. Farmingdale trying to hold on for their 10th 
Empire Conference Championship in their program's history. Fairfield trying to come back for their third conference championship in their program. Manja to cap right now to Malawepsi. Malawepsi behind the cage to Cullen at the blue line. Cullen to Lee. Lee, Majin Capre, Cullen. Cullen in that same spot where he scored before. This time is blocked down by McCann. Burke, give and go to Cullen. Cullen walks in, rips one on net, blockered away by Temkin. Burke trying to settle it down, slow it down. Cullen cross ice feed too high for Magina Capre. Burke now behind the net, finds a man. Lee holds, drags, fires, blocked down. 50 left in the main advantage. Malo Epsi. He'll throw it on net, smothered by Temkin. So with that whistle, Fairfield will get a completely fresh five. They got Marchi, Kid, Momro, McKenna. Okay, I'm trying to make out who's on that left wing right now. Looks like it's Blake. And yeah, Blake will park it in front of the net. Kid, McKenna. Buck bouncing around, it's Blake there. On the turnaround, caught Temkin off guard, but he fought it off. Momro, too far from McKenna. Puck in the air, Murray trying to clear, cannot. Blake, Momro, looks, looks for a backdoor feed, but a sliding block, and maybe a push the other way for O'Donnell, but a nice recovery there by Momro. Three seconds and two, Farmingdale has killed it off and caused a turnover. It's McCann, and a stop by Dillner. Right as the penalty expired, McCann caused a breakaway the other way, and now a little bit of a dispute here as Momro went down. But no discipline coming. Farmdale wins the draw on Dillner. A little late to react as it went wide. That went off a stick and way out of play as that faceoff will come out of the zone. That's something to remember, that breakaway stop there by Dillner on McCann. A crucial goal that would have been to get the biggest lead of the night for either side, which has been now would have been two goals. McDonald banks off the boards. As it'll be Sharfstein, offsides, does not realize he is offsides. Eleven twenty-two left in this championship game. Again, coming up next is the black division in the Empire Conference. Division two championship on the line between Sacred Heart and Stony Brook. Long wrister, glove down there by Leary. That one's off a skate and Leary will have to try again. Man who gave Fairfield that 2-1 lead in the second. As now it's Signoretti, Signoretti. Off the boards, away from Bridgewood, as Burns with speed keeps it in. Nice play by Burns, but not for long. Bridgewood, he keeps it. Bridgewood backhand in front, off a leg of Leary. And Bridgewood on the receiving end of Leary. Burns to the net and wide. Brennan couldn't keep it. 
as McDonald got in front of that one. And now Fairfield on a change. Signoretti will just chop that one in. And now it's Farmingdale to head off on a fresh five. Maggi DiCapri with speed, lost his balance. Tough spill there, but everyone back up. Physicality picking up in that Farmingdale end right now as Minio threw a hit. As now it's Rotan. Rotan tried to go to Minio. Minio trying to get around a man in Cummings. Both got tangled up. As Temkin will let that come underneath his glove. The one goal battle continues on as we are under 10 minutes left. As Tepkin had the night off yesterday, it was goaltender Joseph DeCanio for Farmingdale making 22 saves in the win. Six goals, six different goal scorers yesterday for Farmingdale. In front, just missed Cullen, and now it's Lee, winds, fires, and he just missed on the post. A seeing eye shot got through everyone and just missed that far side post. Out of the corner, trying to power his way through, but cannot. Larico will just flip that to safety. No icing here. Brendan Burke now on the pursuit. As now Immel could not get out with Duffy. Farmingdale tries again and will. Boom, gloves it down. Boom, Duffy fires off a stick out of play. Eight forty-five left now. Mentioned before, Farmingdale going for their tenth conference title. Fairfield, I said two. It's actually they're going for their fourth conference title. They have three championships in the Empire to their name, and Farmingdale has nine. And it's not. It's also not the first time these two have linked up in the Empire Conference Championship game. Off. A couple bounces, shot over the net by Marchi. Puck hemmed in on that near side boards, and bouncing free will be Fairfield's puck. Big body on the boards. Sharfstein, long pass, nobody home, finds McKenna. McKenna, Rister, off the end boards, it'll be Brennan now. As now Farmingdale will exit, trying to find Duffy, and they do. Duffy, as they go offsides, Duffy received that pass coming in backwards, which carried them offsides. Duffy having some words right now with Brazel. Matthews up the middle, has a man, but just out of the reach of Aiden Blake. Blake slipped behind the defense. Brazel in front, pinballing around. Brazel couldn't get to it. Matthews keeps it, looking for a deflection, couldn't find Brazel. Blake comes with it. Matthews now. Long pass down the middle. Hawkins trying to find it. Hawkins with McKenna on him. And McKenna wins the exchange. McDonald to Blake. Blake holding forehand around the net. Finds a man, one-timing shot. Blocked in front by Kravitz. And now we have something behind the play. Brazel tangled up with Temkin, and I believe that's McCann. Yeah, it is McCann. Brazel is still joining. He was joining with Duffy, now with McCann, now with LaChase. 
6'3", 191 out of Hingham, Massachusetts. Now that faceoff will come all the way just outside of Fairfield Ice. Now Lepsey tried to go forward. Judge just outweighted it and got the better of it. That's one kept in by Rotan. Rotan, puck loose, low slot, trying to get it. It's Judge now, backhand try too high. In come the Stags, Burke tries to leave for Kidd and they'll have to regroup with Leary. Leary hangled here by Bridgewood, but we play on. This might be an icing and it's waved off. Waved off, Signoretti in front, finds a man judge and it's snagged by Dillner. So Fairfield anticipating an icing Kind of eased up and left a man wide open in Judge. Good save there by Dillner, his 33rd stop, or should I say his 32nd. Does Fairfield have another late game magic moment in them? Back to back games here in the Empire Conference playoffs. They have rallied in the third with rapid fire goals. Four straight on Friday against Delaware. Five straight last night against Quinnipiac. And right now they don't, they're not really looking for four in a row or five in a row, they just need one. Get this game tied and move from there. Not offsides is O'Donnell and another great stop by Dillner. A weird bounce. In favor of Farmingdale, Dillner stands tall. That's three noteworthy saves by Dillner. The breakaway on McCann moments ago on Judge and right there on O'Donnell stopping a potential hat trick. Minio backhander shot is stopped again by Dillner. Dillner very strong today. He's been very strong overall this tournament. 31 stops on Friday, 28 stops yesterday, and he's already over both those totals at 36 right now. Off the draw, Duffy can't release it. As Duffy will cycle to Immel. Immel in front, one-timing shot again is denied by Dillner. Just keep remembering these stops by Dillner one after another. As this final 10 minutes is like a snail's pace right now. We got 5.05 left. Duffy throws it to the net and Dillner has to get on it again. Farmingdale in the last three games against Dillner put in five, five and four. Today they're at three, but it's been a much different Dillner the goaltender out of Madison, Connecticut. Kravitz over the stick of Bohm. Couldn't link up Majin to Cap right now. Couldn't find Momro, but helped out. It'll be Lee. Marchi trying to get it. Whacked away by Duffy. Duffy now in, holds, whacked away. He'll take it behind. Duffy circling the zone, turnaround, shot blocked, and now Immel's puck. Immel pinned up by Marchi, up the boards, away from Murray. Icing waved off. McGregor deposited by Momro there, missing everyone on that cross ice pass, and no icing because Dildner had to play it. Puck was going to the net. It'll be Blake now with under four minutes left. Aiden Blake around the cage. He'll come out with it, going cross ice for McIntyre. He fans on the shot. And 
Fairfield comes out with it, McIntyre again. Excuse me, now it's McIntyre. Looks, fires, knocked down in front by Tempkin. Sent all the way down, rolling pucks. Not gonna make it, no icing. Three and a half left. Farmingdale holding on to a one goal lead. Right now it's Sean O'Donnell with the game deciding goal. Came late in the second period. Gotta start keeping an eye on Dillner to see when they pull him. Blake now, again, dances free. Backhand try is stopped by Tempkin. Aiden Blake, Adam Pembroke, Massachusetts has been getting his fair share of looks in the dying minutes of this game. So 3.05 left in this one. Still too much time right now to pull Dillner. You're probably gonna start looking maybe around that two minute mark. We'll keep an eye on Dillner. He's right in front of me, so be hard to miss him going to the bench if necessary. Hawkins gets it out of the zone, trying to power through, he will. Banks it forward towards LaChase. LaChase, around near side McCann, and Kravitz will glove it down. Kravitz, LaChase, trying to fend off Malawepsi. Could not clear it. Was Kidd, pass in front. LaChase had no stick, so he had to go get it, and he was not able to get to the net. 2.25 left. Dillner not moving, shot on goal, snagged away by Tempkin. Dillner is looking to the bench, and he's not moving. Still on his goal line. Let's see, maybe Fairfield calls a timeout, and they will. So a Fairfield timeout, might see Dillner stay at the bench now. So how did we get here? It was a power play goal late in the first period by Brandon Cullen hitting off a Farmingdale defenseman and in. The Sags would take that one nothing lead into the first period where not even two minutes in, Sean O'Donnell goes five hole on Eric Dillner to tie it up. And then minutes later, William Leary gives the Stags their lead back. But then, it was a power play goal by Jason Brennan in tight, and then with a minute and 36 left in the second period, it was Sean O'Donnell, a quick breakaway beats Dillner, and that's where we stand, three to two, in the Division I Purple Division Empire Conference Championship game. Farmingdale trying to hold on for their 10th Empire Conference Championship, and Fairfield trying to mount a comeback to try to get their fourth. Fairfield had the heroics the last two nights, which we have mentioned. They're coming off a quick turnaround, and we saw that evident in the first period. A tired Fairfield group was stuck in their own zone for the most parts of the first period, but despite that, came out of the first with a lead. And now they have fired back with a strong second period and are pushing late. The last time these two teams met up in the regular season, it was Farmingdale down 4-3 late in the third, tied it up with 10 seconds left to go. Can Fairfield now turn the tables and tie it? 2-18 left to go in the Division I Empire Conference Championship game. Something's gotta give. No Dillner, empty net for Fairfield. Six on five. Majin Capre looks, fires wide. Lee walks the blue line. He'll throw it down low, Burns is there, shoveling it up the boards. Signoretti will just push it to center. Under two minutes. Lee winds, fires, and into the glass. That was a tricky one. Burke in front, off some skates, and Farmingdale can't clear. They're gonna try again, puck into the netting. So Farmingdale will take this time to change it up. Fairfield making a couple of switches. Lee and Majina Capre off, McKenna and Kidd on. So they go with the smaller defensive pairing. 
Malawepsi on the dot comes forward. Malawepsi on the boards, throwing it out in the middle, and Kidd gets there. He's keeping it onside. McKenna to the net, off the end boards. A minute and a half left. Kidd around one. Off a skate and out of the zone. Sharfstein has to get it. Sharfstein has to dump it cross ice. Farmingdale off the glass and no icing as Sharfstein was right there. He was trying to get off. And if he wasn't trying to make a line change, that could have been an icing. Now Sharfstein will head off. Kravitz to go chase with Malawepsi on him. One minute left to go in the game. Farmingdale, empty net, and it's wide. And it will be icing against the Rams. This will not be the end of the season for these two teams because kicking off March, not this weekend, coming up the next week, will be the beginning of the AAU National Championship Tournament. But before we get there, we got to wrap up the Empire Conference here. 50 left to go, Fairfield down one, kick save Temkin, Minio pokes it free, laurelling away, but to safety for now if you're the Stags. Lee, off the stick of Cohen, slowed down by Temkin, Brennan in the corner with Blake, Blake gets it, to the point, Lee fires, and it goes wide. Momro with 25 left in the game, around the boards, Blake, Cohen looks, holds, goes around the boards, lead of the blue line, 15 left, shot wide of the cage, behind Cohen, Momro, loose, save, rebound, and they score! Eight seconds left, Fairfield has tied it! The third period magic continues. With the championship on the line and eight seconds left to go, it will be Connor Momro out of Slingerlands, New York that has given Fairfield a second life. Mallow FC pushes forward. They got eight seconds to work with. Three seconds left, and we're going to overtime. Eight seconds ago, it was Farmingdale's 10th Empire Conference title. But Connor Monroe and Fairfield had other plans. They have tied it up and pushed this game to overtime. And now are these teams gonna go off the ice for an ice cut or are they just gonna stay out there? And I believe they're gonna head off for an ice cut. When we return, the Division I Empire Conference Finals will be heading to overtime.
Welcome back, everyone, to the rinks at Shelton, Connecticut. You're watching live on the LI Sports Network. The Empire Conference Division I Championship game needs overtime. Connor Momro with eight seconds left in the game ties it at three with the net empty for Fairfield. And we're underway. Next goal takes the crown. And it was last year Fairfield lost the Empire Conference Championship game in overtime on this side of the ice against Ramapo. Can they now win it? on this side of the ice against Farmingdale in overtime. Shot from the point, off a leg and into the end boards. Hawkins, McCann, and no icing here, it hit a stick. Majin Capre with LaChase. And now it's Le McCann to the point. Rotan throws it on net, deflected, and it goes wide. You see Sacred Heart in the back looking on. They got their ch Division II championship game coming up next. Now Lewepsi Rister on goal, fought off by Temkin. To the net, off the side of the cage, and it will be Hawkins now. Hawkins walks in, pulls off with room, draws a penalty. It's a tripping call against Fairfield. And Farmingdale with the chance now to end it. And they're going to get Maggi to Capri. Farmingdale, that's how they tied the game. A Jason Brennan power play goal. He's out there right now on the left wing. He'll be in front of the net. Can they end the championship game on the power play? Does Fairfield have more life to fight off? Usually in overtime, you let a lot of things go in terms of penalties, but when it's very obvious, the refs will call it, and that one was a trip as Majina Capre got beat on a spin move by Hawkins and got his stick in the skate blade. I don't know what the delay is right now, but we'll drop it. Cummings on the dot for Fairfield. Against, believe that's Bridgewood. Bridgewood wins it. Signoretti to McGregor. McGregor walks the blue line and goes to Bridgewood. He rips one on goal. Blocked down. Sliding block there by Cummings. McGregor, touch pass now. Bridgewood has to go get it. It's in the corner now. I believe that's Judge down low. 20 minutes, five on five hockey in overtime till we get a winner. McGregor, cross side, Signoretti in his feet, back to McGregor. McGregor has to let it go, does, block down and out of the zone. Two big blocks there by the Stags, that time Matthews and before the sliding body of Christopher Cummings. Rams will keep the same group out there as McGregor, trying to get away from Sharfstein, will give to Luke Judge. Signoretti trying to eat it on the boards, and Firefield will send it down. Fairfield with a fresh four. Farmingdale trying to get a fresh five. Farmingdale only has four people on the ice right now. They gotta fix that. As O'Donnell walks in, leaves for Minio. Minio turnaround pass broken up. Have a man up the middle, but just out of the reach of Marchi. 30 seconds left on this man advantage. Not much happening right now for Farmingdale. Minio would like to play that with the skate, and it got away from him, and now it's a defensive zone draw. But nope, Temkin kept it alive. Wise move by Temkin, not taking that face off. Lorico now, power play coming into an end. 10 left on the man advantage. Lorico. Around the boards, looks to Kravitz. Kravitz looks to the net, blocked down, and that will do it for five on four. Fairfield survives it. And not a very strong power play to say the least, as now they cough it up in their own zone. It's Lee now. Lee to the net, deflected, slowed down. Behind the net, Cohen. Cohen meets a big hit. Malawepsi 
Cohen back to his feet and over the stick of Leary. That one chopped in. Malawepsi will be first on it with Brennan now. Brennan on the boards. Judge now to scoop up. Judge hit his own man in Bridgewood and the puck stuck at the blue line there. And now out of the zone, but still near that blue. Looks like that puck does not want to leave the blue. And now it finally does as Cohen will just whip that cross ice. The defender burns. Whips it around the boards. Bridgewood on the chase with Leary. And now it's Cohen to wrap it off. The boards kept in at the blue line, but not for long. And now trying to push with speed and almost with speed was McDonald. Bridgewood pushes forward. Immel can't get to it. As Fairfield whips this down, icing's going to be negated because Brazel was first on it. But it stays in. Brazel behind the cage, trying to stuff backhand. It's sitting on the side of the cage. Tempkin trying to eat it. Tempkin still trying to eat it. Loose in front, and they blow it dead. That puck was sitting there for a long time, and eventually the whistle was blown. Last time these two teams were in overtime was the last game these two teams faced off in the regular season. It was Farmingdale tying the game in the third with 10 seconds left, and then Tim Duffy winning it in overtime. Fairfield trying to flip the narrative. Fairfield likes pushing forward on the draws. Blake tries to throw it on net, hit him a leg. Blake gets it back, Blake fires off of Immel. Now Bowen might have a step here, but Matthews, Matthews with a great recovery. They go to Bohm again. Ethan Bohm shoots. And nothing happening there as now Fairfield tries to exit and they'll link up with McDonald. McDonald chops that in. Rotan behind the net, fans on it, but keeps it with them. Rotan off the boards. Nice bounce here for Farmingdale. Odd man rush. Duffy with Bohm. Duffy fires. Save made by Dillner. And now potential breakaway, and they miss Momro. Momro gets the room. Momro coming out. Shouldered away by Tempkin. Back and forth we go. And now it's McCann's turn. The captain McCann will flip that innocently off the end boards. Duffy down low. Duffy around the boards. Burns trying to keep it, and he'll have to come out. Sharfstein chasing Burns. Burns will leave for Brennan. Innocent fall there with Momro and Hawkins tied up, and it'll be an icing against Farmingdale. You want to go back. Momro's goal tied the game, but Eric Dillner made five or six crucial stops within the final 10 minutes that kept Farmingdale off the board. One of those goes in, that's game. Point shot up in the air. Way over the bar. As Malowski scoops up, Malowski wrister. It's a loose puck, poked away. McCann trying to get it, pokes it loose. Might be a foot race. Lachase trying to get there. Lachase on goal. And it's stopped by Dillner, goes wide of the cage. Lachase to the blue line. Brennan looks, cross point, burns, holds, fires, blocked. Burns, good reach with the stick, perhaps preventing a two on one. Brennan pushes the man off. He's gonna glove it down, chop it in. Farmingdale getting a fresh five out there. Imagine a Capre. Keeps it alive. Near side, battling with O'Donnell, coughs it up, Minio. Minio, Larico fires into the netting. Everyone is at the edge of their seat here in Shelton. Every shot 
every opportunity. Weighs heavy. One off the draw, the Rico shot, bounce wide. It redirected at the last second. Back-to-back -back looks for Larico as Kravitz couldn't slow that down. But now a breakaway for the championship. Stopped by Tepkin. It was Brazel all alone. Now remember that save. And now Brazel again with space. Brazel gloved away by Temkin. Temkin keeps us going. Just like Dillner kept us going in the third, Temkin for now keeps us going in overtime. No icing here as that hit Brazel. And the man falls down for Fairfield. Could be a three on two with speed. Bridgewood powering around. Bridgewood will go behind the cage with it. Bridgewood down low finds a man. It's Judge trying to spin off and get free. Judge shovels to the blue line. Rotan walks, fires, pad save, rebound loose. They poke away and covered by Dillner. I mean, you're getting everything you can ask for right now. And some. Eleven twenty-six left in this first sudden death overtime. Another offensive zone win. Rotan. Signoretti can't find it. And he'll come to Judge. Judge can't keep it in front. And again, Fairfield out with speed. Marchi off a stick. Helped out by McKenna to the net. Kicked away. Momro. McKenna. Couldn't keep it for long. Trying to hit Signoretti up the middle. But Matthews eats that up. Bearfield changing up some of the forwards. Rotan will take his time. Rotan trying to get around Malo Epsi. Does, but then a little bit too much physicality there for Rotan as that chopped right back into, into Farmingdale Ice. You got Malo Epsi and Judge digging for it. You got a long shift right now for Judge. Signoretti and Bridgewood, and a fresh three right now for Fairfield, looking for Mello Wepsy, and he scores! Ned Mello Wepsy, Fairfield completes the comeback. They end it, 4-3, Empire Conference champions. For the fourth time in program history, Fairfield are champions of the Empire. And with nine seconds left in this game, that statement did not have much validity to it. One second later, with eight seconds left in the game, Connor Momro gives Fairfield life, tying it at three, and then in overtime, it's the captain, Ned Malawepsi, putting home the loose change in front, and Fairfield have snatched victory from the jaws of defeat and stand alone as champions of the Empire. Fairfield last year was on the receiving end of this, on the same side of the ice. They lost in overtime in the finals to Ramapo in that same goal. One year later, on the same side in the same net, 
They complete a comeback, winning the Empire Conference title. Ned Malawepsi, the captain and the hero, celebrates with the Stags. Fourth time in program history, they will raise the Emperor's Cup. Fairfield stands alone. They will take that crown into the national tournament in two weeks, knocking off Farmingdale four to three in overtime. Thank you for joining us. Coming up next on the LI Sports Network, it's the Division II Empire Conference Finals, Sacred Heart and Stony Brook.